Well, joining us now is the party's leader, Jared Batten. Thank you very much for being on the programme this morning. morning it feels like we should start with those polls, doesn't it? We can have a quick look, mm. I think, uh, at one of the latest polls in the newspapers today, ahead of those European elections. You can see there the Brexit party tearing away uh, in top spot. UKIP on 3%. I mean, if you look at this, and the Brexit party are effectively mopping up the leave vote, What's the point of UKIP? Um, well, if you believe them, Sophie, I'm afraid the poll that I believe will be the one on Thursday. And if you look at the events of the last six weeks and month, where we've had real elections with real voters, I mean, we got 8.6% in the Newport West by-election in Wales, which is not one of our natural territories. In the local elections, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, we got 56% in Derby. We got 40% in Sunderland. We were getting high teens and 20s in other Brexit places. Brexit wasn't standing, though. That's um, the key, isn't it? It wasn't standing. And I feel that a lot of this is, a, is designed to be a kind of false... Uh, sorry, a self-fulfilling prophecy. I don't actually believe the polls. Um, I think Brexit Party is being bigged up uh, because uh, it doesn't represent a real domestic threat after the European elections. And I think okay. um, the only poll that I'm really going to take notice of is the one on Thursday. And as I'm going around the country, and we've gone around in our campaign bus for the last couple of weeks talking to people, we're still picking up enormous support as we go out and talk to ordinary people. So how many MEPs has UKIP lost under your leadership then? Well, it, they lost a few before I came along, Sophie, so not it's fair to say that uh, they all went uh, under my leadership. Two some of them, under some of them have gone. And, and, of course, Nigel in the second term managed to lose 45%, which didn't really get widely reported on. Uh, that's just uh, the way it went. You still lost uh, 16 MEPs. Well, we've lost some of them, and some of them went, uh, uh, quite amusingly, I think, went off to Nigel because they thought that they'd get a better chance of a top of the, the, the uh, list seat under Nigel, and he's only actually ended up taking two of them with him. And how about councillors? How many councillors have uh, you lost? Well, we, the, actual, um, the actual figures were we lost 67 seats. We won, th um, we won 31, so we had a 36 net loss. So it wasn't as bad as been reported. So since you've become leader, you've lost 268 councillors. I mean, if you look at that, well, do you ever think, you know, you're not very good at this? Well, you know, what, last, what's happening? Last year, when we had our first council election, I inherited a party that was just about to implode and disappear. There was no local election campaign, and we did lose about 100 and odd seats then. But I inherited no campaign. I walked straight into a maelstrom of nothing, which had been in, I'd inherited. Since then, we've built the party up. I've almost doubled the membership. We were at low of 17,000. We're now up to about 30,000. We were financially bust, about to go broke. We're now comfortably off. We have an income of about a million pounds a year. We've got donations coming in. So if I look at it from that point of view, well, we're rebuilding a party that actually nearly disappeared. And I didn't you, do it on my own. I did it with the members behind if you, me. Um, if you lose your seat yeah. in the European elections, will you quit? I think if I lost my seat in London, it would be untenable for me to continue as leader. But I won't make a decision about what I'm going to do until after the European elections. Because I'm getting a lot of people from within the party overwhelming saying to me, whatever the result is, they want me to continue. But I will okay. base my decision on the outcome of the European elections and how I feel afterwards. I, um, I just want to put something to you, because I went on the leave march, mm. um, you know, uh, that happened when, on, on the day that we were supposed to leave the EU. And I was really struck by a mother and daughter who approached me. And they were keen to talk about, you know, the fact that mm. they voted leave, why they voted leave. But they were also very keen to tell me that the half of the march cheering for Tommy mm. Robinson did not represent them mm. as Leave voters. They were really keen for me to get that message. And I just wonder if you've made a miscalculation by appearing mm. to ally with a small minority of people who voted Leave and in doing so, alienating some of the many, many millions of people who voted to Brexit. Well, um... Our main focus has always been about leaving the European Union. We've had a policy on that, as you well know, for 27 years. Um, I, th I brought Tommy Robinson in as an advisor, and he was never a member of the party, and now he's running against us in the North West anyway, uh, because I felt that was the right thing to do. Now, only time will tell whether that decision was the right one or not. But we've still got lots of people supporting us who don't agree with everything we say or what, everything I've done. But nevertheless, the big overriding issue to them is leaving the European Union. I wonder as and, well what that mother and daughter would think about one of your lead candidates, Carl Benjamin, as well. Well, this is... Who, this. I just want to, you know, let, let me just... Some of our viewers won't be familiar with I'm the story. sure they are. Uh, he said about a Labour MP, there's been an awful lot of talk about whether I would or wouldn't rape Jess Phillips. I suppose with enough pressure I might cave, but let's be honest... 
nobody's got that much beer. I mean, that well, is really upsetting, isn't it? It is a bad taste joke, which I wouldn't have made. Is that it a joke? Tone. I, I don't rang understand him why it's a joke. I really don't. Well, I don't... He, has a, he has another uh, existence as a commentator and a, and a comedian on the internet and the stuff that he does. I don't condone that. I said it's a very bad taste joke. I rang him up and made my views very plain to him and he won't be doing something like that again. But this is one joke in an entire campaign, which is about more well, he keeps saying things. it, though, doesn't he? No, he doesn't. It keeps being brought up by the mainstream media. I've answered this on every question... Sorry, every programme I've been on. He's done it. He was on Victoria Derbyshire giving his rationale for why he said it. And I don't really think it's an important issue compared to the real issue, which is why are we in an election which shouldn't be being held? And really, the fate of the country is at stake. Are we going to leave the European Union or not? I mean, you mentioned that Victoria Derbyshire interview. When he was giving that interview, Jess Phillips um, sent a tweet, um, and this is what she said. She said, I feel sick watching Carl Benjamin chuckling along to people joining in with the language he has given them about putting a bag on my head and raping me. I mean, do well, you feel I a bit I'm, sick? Uh, I, th I, was, uh, I wouldn't make a joke like that. I don't condone it. And I don't, do feel, I don't think do the bag remark was in whatever he said. Does it make you feel sick when you look at some I of the internet it. memes? I don't approve been... of it. I mean, the internet is, is a pretty uh, rough and ready place at the best of times. But I think a lot of people were sick when she said that about the 1,400 sexual assaults in Cologne, that it was compared to a night out in Birmingham. I don't think that was a tasteful remark either. So she's not exactly a stranger to controversy. She's not a shrinking violet. She's a rough, tough Labour MP. MP. She doesn't deserve it, though, does she? I wouldn't have made it, and I don't condone it. She doesn't deserve it, though, does she? No. Um, I just want to... Because you, well, you say you have been asked about this before, and you're, you often say that you know the reason that you are reaching out to people like Carl Benjamin and Tommy Robinson mm. is because they allow UKIP to reach new voices. They have this internet presence that allows you to reach new audiences. But part of me can't help wondering if they are not getting more from this relationship than you are. I mean, you're tanking in the polls. Well, well, you're you're, well, you're so, losing so, councillors and MEPs. I, I mean, Sophie, are you being played here? I, I, I They're you, getting more from you than them, well, aren't they? my membership's going up. And what I, another figure, interesting figure that was told to me last week is that in the 18 to 25s, we are now second biggest to Labour in terms of people who in, in that age group who intend to vote for us and approve of what we're doing. So it's actually so working... So you're, you're second are, to Labour? Yeah, Labour is on about 30-odd percent. We were on about 14 percent. And everyone it, else is who? below that. Um, I can't remember the exact who exactly did this polling, but that was the figure that I was given. OK, I, I've, I, that, I'm just surprised, because that doesn't chime with well, polling that I've that's seen. what I was told. And um, I said, are you sure about that? And they said, yes, that's what it's saying. Now, if, if, if we're doing that, that shows me that we are reaching out. And one thing that's been said to me as well by people around the country in our branches is that they're bringing in a lot of younger people now as branch officers and branch activists, which is great, because that means we've got fresh people coming through to take us through into the next load of elections, which, of course, is going to be a general election. Now, one thing I'd like, I might get the chance to talk to you about, Sophie, is MEPs that are elected in this next parliament. What are they going to do? Now, were you, your guests early on were talking about the withdrawal agreement. Now, one thing that the new MEPs will have to do, if the withdrawal agreement is passed in parliament, is vote on it in the European parliament. And in fact, the existing MEPs could be called back for an emergency plenary in June in order to vote on it, if it's passed by parliament. Now, my opinion, all, and I've been entirely consistent about this all through the process, is that what's been cooked up by Parliament, or sorry, what's been presented to them by Mrs May, is a not really leaving the EU withdrawal agreement. So if any UKIP MEPs who are elected will vote against that withdrawal agreement in the European Parliament as the final step in the Article 50 process. And we are not just about rhetoric saying leave means leave. We're actually go, going to put the government back, to, or help to put the government back to square one. So then they have to leave under their own stream and under a no deal um, scenario. Okay, Gerard Batten, thank you much for coming on the You're programme. Welcome.